Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to our presentation, Tools and Strategies for Teaching Adults in a Remote Setting. Cambridge University Press is sponsoring this session today. Our diverse panel consists of Dominique Alari from California, Julie Brown from Texas, Jody Kohler from Wisconsin, and I'm Donna Price, the moderator. The panelists will share their experiences transitioning abruptly from face-to-face -face teaching to online instruction using ventures. They will share with you how they have been successfully using online teaching strategies and tools at the beginning through advanced levels using ventures. Cambridge University Press and the field of ESL want to thank our panelists who are sharing their time and many talents. With that, let's begin with Dominique discussing successful strategies and tools for the intermediate low levels of instruction. So hi, Dominique. What are a few of the ways you use Presentation Plus in your online class? Hi, I didn't think I could successfully teach online, but with the help of the Cambridge resources, I'm making it through this difficult time. Last semester, I used Ventures 2, and this semester, I'm using Ventures 3. I love using Presentation Plus for my synchronous Zoom class. I use it to present the textbook on the computer screen, as I did in the classroom using the overhead projector. Since I'm on Zoom, I've been using some of the Zoom annotation tools. I use the text box feature to write comments um, and uh, answers and other vocabulary words that come up in the lesson. The students and I can use the Zoom drawing tool to check an answer, draw a line to an answer, underline words, circle words, and it makes the lesson more interactive. <clears throat> um, the students can use the stamp function to put a check next to an item in a picture and use the text box to write something about the picture. Wow, these are really, these tools really get the students involved. Um, in addition to the Zoom annotation tools that Dominique described, Presentation Plus has its own annotation features. One of my favorites is something called the sticky note. You can put it anywhere on the page and move it wherever you want and write on it. One way I like to use it is to find out what students already know in the big picture. So I cover up the words and then I type the words as they tell me. Afterwards, I can take off the sticky note to see the words behind it. Okay, so back to Dominique. How else do you use Presentation Plus? Well, I really like the Presentation Plus answer key. For many exercises, it shows each answer one at a time. And the answer key can be moved around the page so it's not in the way. Mm -hmm. During the Zoom class, I can click on the QR code to project the grammar videos and the audio. The grammar videos are very nice for the students get, to get a more detailed presentation with some more examples and extra practice. And the students can use the QR codes to watch the video and listen to the audio asynchronously at home. And they really like that. Yes, we've been told that the QR codes are very popular for students. They can listen, listen, listen. Yeah. And um, with the audio, I play it a couple times. And then I also click on the dialogue box. And the students can practice by reading the script. Uh, for a follow up, I ask students to look at the script in the back of the student book at home. And they can practice at home as well as we can bring it up again the next day in class. That's a great use of the back of the book. What about um, the collaborative or the multi-level worksheets? Do you use them and, and how do you use them? Yes, I do. I, I've been using the conversation questions that are 
uh, in level or lesson B of the collaborative worksheets. I send the PDF in the Canvas inbox and tell students that we'll be using it the next day in class. The next day, the students practice the conversation questions in breakout rooms. I use the multi-level fillable form worksheets that I can access from the Cambridge website. I put them in a Canvas module for students to do for homework. Um, this makes it really easy for, for me to use and for the students to fill in as well. It's great. Yeah, you know, the field really needed these fillable form worksheets and Cambridge provided them. Uh, what about, um, we talked about Canvas a little bit and does your school require this learning management system? Yes, we're required to use Canvas. I had never used uh, Canvas or any learning management system um, before. So I was really stressed about trying to figure it all out but having ventures materials was a great way to get started. And it just made my life a whole lot easier. Um, the unit tests that Cambridge provides were a godsend. I was able to import them from Canvas Commons and put them in my Canvas course shell. And in addition to the unit tests, there's also a midterm test and a final test. And they are corrected in Canvas automatically, except for the writing section, which the teacher corrects. Wonderful. So let me summarize some of the great strategies that Dominique shared. In Presentation Plus, she uses annotation tools to make the class more interactive. She uses the answer key and the QR codes to watch the grammar videos and listen to the audio and pull up the script. She uses the fillable form worksheets and she takes advantage of all the ready-made materials on Canvas. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Julie Brown from Dallas College who has taught remotely in both credit and non-credit colleges. What about you, Julie? What's one thing you'd like to share about how you use Presentation Plus? Um, I use a variety of the tools built in, but I do enjoy the timer. Um, it really helps when you're presenting online to keep everybody at the same pace. So in this particular lesson, it's from Ventures Level 2, Unit 2, and it's Lesson E, the writing. So here the students were working on setting goals. So on the left side of the page, we talked about goals for Angela, our character in the unit. And then they wrote, helped write goals for Angela. And then on the right side of the page where it's circled in red, the students are supposed to complete a chart about their own goals. So what I do here is I set the timer. Students have their print book in front of them. Um, the students get a print book of the student workbook also. So they have the print set. Um, they prefer that over the ebook. So they have the print book in front of them. Um, they go according to the timer and they do their writing and then when the timer's finished they go into breakout rooms so that they can talk to each other um, either in pairs or groups and then when they're finished for a couple minutes doing that we come back together as a group and this way it keeps everybody on task and at the same pace. Well, I, I really love the way you use the timer. I had never heard people use the timer. And I think some people don't even realize that it's there for them mm -hmm. in Presentation Plus. Uh, let's see. You talked about Padlet and you told me an interesting way you use Padlet with ventures. Mm -hmm. Can you share that and maybe <laughs> describe Padlet briefly for people who haven't used it? Yes. So Padlet is a separate website outside of Ventures. Um, you can use a certain amount of Padlet bulletin boards for free. It's a bulletin board, a digital bulletin board. And there are different designs you can set up, such as a timeline or on the right, a world map. The one on the left is just your standard bulletin board with sticky notes. So they're digital sticky notes. And um, you can use a Padlet for a variety of things. I often use it as a warm up or a cool down for a class. So in this particular example, I like to go back to a previous unit 
for repetition, but um, I also try to tie it in with the current unit. So in this one, it's uh, level two, unit six, and they were working on um, past tense. So this warm up is actually an error correction activity. So the students are already in numbered pairs in the class. So what the students are supposed to do at the bottom, you can see the instructions. The students picked the number that matches their pair number, and their job is to go into a breakout room correct the verb errors in the sentences. And then we come back together and go over the answers when I share the whole Padlet screen with the class. So at the top, you can see the example from pair number seven, which was Sergio and Viola. So they corrected their sentences with the correct verbs, but then under that, they also have to tell the class how they got the correct answers, which ones were correct and incorrect and why. And this helps with um, metacognitive skills, how they're thinking about getting to the correct answer. This is so creative. I just love using Padlet like this. Um, now, how do you use the companion website to Ventures called Arcade in your classes? Um, Ventures Arcade, I love Ventures Arcade because it's fun. And anytime you can put fun in education, it's great. Um, the Ventures Arcade, it allows for student repetition, but also digital skills. So you can go back again and do a unit that you've done before, or you can do the current unit that you're working on. You can do it as warm ups, cool downs, a break between lessons. So this one gives you an example of it's got a drag and drop activity or a fill in the blank activity. There's Hangman and other games. You can do it synchronously while the class is live as a whole class to practice. And you can also assign it outside of class for students to do asynchronously. And since um, the arcade is open source with no registration, students just click on a link and go to it. It's really easy for students to use um, on their phones even. And I just drop a link to it in their Blackboard on our Blackboard page and they just click on it and go straight to it. And it's really easy and many of them use it. Um, if you set up a class, it keeps track of time that the students use it. So many of them, you can tell they're using it much more than you expected because they like the games. Ah, the arcade also includes citizenship, which is important to point out. Um, many students like to practice the 100 civics questions from the citizenship test. And you can see here, it stim uh, simulates the real test because it's audio only. So when they're asked the question, it won't be printed anywhere. So it gives them good listening practice and then responding to a spoken question. Wonderful, thank you. You're so welcome. just to summarize a few of Julie's strategies, she uses the timer on Presentation Plus in innovative ways to time writing. She uses Padlet for error correction and Arcade, the free website that reinforces grammar and content from the Venture Student Book. Our last panelist is Jody Kohler from Lakeshore Technical College in Wisconsin. Jody is our expert beginning level teacher, which we all know has many challenges in online settings. In spite of the challenges, she hasn't lost her excitement and motivation. Jody, when we talked about your class, you told me an interesting way you assess your students. Can you share that? Yes, definitely, Donna. Um, Ventures was the resource that really held us together as we quickly made a transition to online learning. What you're looking at now is a unit test, um, unit six from Ventures One, and you'll notice parts A and F are missing. And I'd like to explain why. So in spring and summer of 2020, about half of our ELL learners were able to make the transition from in-person to online learning with us and access our synchronous instruction in Blackboard by doing many, many clicks um, to get to us with lots of assistance. Ventures unit tests were entered into Blackboard and learners who could access it were able to take those tests and we felt a bit of victory, which was great. However, in fall of 2020, our college IT needed to increase security for all students and staff online. 
this change created even more steps, more clicks for learners to log into Blackboard. So we sensed that change would frustrate our lowest levels. So we needed to pivot, quit, pivot quickly. Um, so first we sent links uh, to the Ventures Basic and One learners so that they could get them via text messages or personal email so that they could access us in live synchronous instruction on Blackboard Collaborate. And since logging into Ventures Basic and one in Blackboard wasn't happening, they couldn't take those Ventures tests. So we needed to find another way. So in looking at the Ventures unit assessment right here, I decided to give parts B grammar, C grammar, and D reading for each unit. Listening and writing seemed to be too difficult to do in live instruction. Um, so this, this is my new testing procedure. So I make a schedule with 15 minute student time slots, appointments. Um, they choose what day and time works for them based on that. And on testing day, I put students one on one with me in a breakout room. So this is where the magic happens. I get to give the assessment yet and know their level. Plus, I get to build relationships with them, which is kind of hard in virtual instruction. So I project a copy of the test using my document camera. And for practice, I have students spell their first name, spell their last name, write, help me write the date. That's in the Ventures One welcome unit, as well as uh, personal information. Next, I asked them to read the sentences to me uh, or the, the grammar sentences or questions and tell me what to fill in the blank for parts B and C. As I write, they watch my pen <laughs> and they ask me to change things if need be. Um, so they're watching me as I write for them and telling me what to do. For part D reading, I have students read a paragraph and then I note any errors that they would have on a different piece of paper so that we can go over those problems. Lastly, they choose yes or no for the, the reading comprehension part. With this approach, I encourage good test taking strategies like skipping the tough questions and coming back to those later or checking your work when finished to make sure you have everything done. I also assess their listening their decoding, their ability to follow directions, pronounce words, and even spell this way. When finished, I score them with them and review whatever they got wrong. Modeling test-taking strategies like these assi will assist our learners with the TABE Class E, which they're required to take in Wisconsin. And also, I think by completing these tests with me, I have more valid test scores because I think that they might have been getting some help when they were in Blackboard, either using their text a lot or getting help from family. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that this approach would work for anybody in synchronous instruction if they can't access like we couldn't Blackboard. What a great way to assess your students and get to know them at the same time. Really wonderful. Um, what are some interactive online strategies you use to engage your students during your online class? So I like to use the chat tool a lot in Blackboard to reinforce the venture skills. Um, you can see here where I asked students to write five things they do every week. And this task comes from Ventures One Lesson C, page 75. So as they enter these, I read these aloud, their chats aloud, and I make some gentle error corrections as I read. So I'd like to point out cooking with Domingo. Um, a lot of students will say cooking a lot or reading a lot, and they're not noticing the different tense time changes. And at this point, they're learning simple present tense. So I help them. Um, I, are you cooking right now? No, you're learning with me. You are learning with me, but you cook every day. So I cook, we cook, you cook, they cook. She cooks, he cooks. A cat or dog can't cook, but it cooks, right? So I can point out those, those errors and help them. Um, so there are some other examples that I have where I engage my students. So you'll see on the left-hand side, here's a, a poll question. And this comes from Ventures One Lesson C, Unit 6. We learned simple present tense. That's what we've been working on lately um, with when questions. So the prepositions in and on and at and from and to. So I asked this poll question right away as a warm up. When do you do your homework? And their choices are there in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and at night. So they, they picked what they do and most actually do their homework in the morning before class. Some do it at night. Um, so 
the neat thing here was they knew morning, afternoon, evening, and night, but they didn't realize the preposition that went with it. So they could see the preposition here. And also I like to use chat. Chat, like I said, is a great way to, to either pose something with ventures to do a task or even check, check up on each other. We like to build community, ask each other how they're doing and say good morning to each other when we log on. And, and throughout, if they have a personal message, they can send one to me, a problem, whatever they need. I use the raise hand tool to the right a little differently, probably. Um, I have them raise their hand when they're finished with something. Sometimes I can't see the class list um, and you don't know who's done and who's not done. So this is a way instead of I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. They can raise their hand and I'll listen for the ding for that sound and then I'll know. I also use that as well if they have a question or they need me. And below, one of my good friends, the document camera. <laughs> it was a good friend before, even better when virtual. Um, I do the unit tests with that as well as um, when we have an activity and I need to model writing. You know, we, we need to just keep writing in our notebooks while we're virtual in this kind of instruction. So I can model spelling conventions and other things with ventures. Nice. Do your students have the student book in their online classes? Definitely, it's really, really helped. Um, for breakout groups, they actually have the textbook in front of them. So when I put them at a breakout group, they can work in their text yet. Um, but this gives them the ability to study after class. Those QR codes are amazing. It's like teaching, taking the teacher home with you. I can't go home. Well, I kind of am with virtual. <laughs> but anyway, um, to be there when you they need it and when they can study again, those QR codes are awesome. They also don't need to rely on devices, working devices, ac accessing the internet. Um, they can complete these at work also as well. Um, I think our student success has definitely increased and they're persistent with language learning as a result of having the print-based texts. Also with the teacher's additions, it's helped me to be able to train new instructors coming on. Um, they're step-by-step, -step, easy to follow and really understandable. I like to use the expansion activities in them. So I guess to end, Donna, I would say that we were satisfied before the pandemic with Ventures, but since, honestly, we're, we're very happy that we had the support. So Wonderful. What a lot of great tidbits you shared. So to summarize some of the things was um, she showed how she successfully does the unit tests in her beginning level class. She talked about ways she engages her students with the polls and the chat. And she ended by saying how important it was for her students to have their own copies of the print textbook and workbook to keep up with the class and to do homework assignments. So what is your biggest takeaway from our panelists today? Since there isn't really a way to communicate with us, um, I'd like you to think about something you heard today that you might try in the near future, such as presentation plus and annotation tools, the fillable form worksheets, the canvas materials, ideas from Padlet, the free website arcade that reinforces the grammar and the content from the student book, unit tests and polls and chat. So we hope that of all of these, you'll wanna try one or two. Here's a list of online resources to help teachers find materials to use in their classes. You can access this PowerPoint with this list of resources on the TESOL Google Drive where the recording is. And here are a few more interesting things for teachers. How to Teach Remotely with Ventures is a free booklet Cambridge created to help teachers use ventures in online classes. The guide makes suggestions for how to use ventures and offers supplemental materials to support online classes. The guide includes links um, on how-to videos such as how to use breakout rooms on Zoom. So Cambridge University Press and the panelists and all the Ventures authors, 
Thank you very much for watching this presentation. Good luck with your face-to-face -face and online classes.